Okay, so welcome to the Wednesday before spring break. You guys are doing far better in terms of turnout than my first class. Uh, we started this morning with three people. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, little, it's a little better for you guys at least. Maybe it's because it's later in the day or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, today we're going to talk a little bit about V-Ray proxy objects just so that you guys can understand what they are and why you might want to use them occasionally. Uh, they can be a very good tool, but they're kind of an optional tool. Um, not necessary for everything, but they can be very useful uh, at times. In terms of the trajectory, the bulk of what I want you to do today is work on your renderings. I know there are a number of you that I need to sit down with and try to solve some problems. Um, th we're getting to the point in the semester where there's going to be lots of little problems and we're going to try to work with it. Um, and that's, that's normal. It is what it is. Um, so I want you to have today to actually do some work, get some renderings done. Um, this whole lab, I did turn on every computer this morning, make sure they were all restarted and ready to uh, render. So all should be good unless uh, somebody closed it when they worked on it in my first class. So I'll go back and double check any of the open computers. Uh, do type in the computers by manually um, to make sure that you're using just this lab's worth of computers because I can't guarantee the computers outside of this <laughs> have the correct Q drive and all the rest of it. Uh, but if you type in ET103-1 through ET103-32, uh, um, you'll be able to get all the computers in this lab and it, it seems to be working quite nicely uh, this morning. I was running a few mm -hmm. test renders uh, as we were going through it. Um, so. Today, the purpose is you can pick any one of the renderings that you want to work on, uh, updating, uh, trying to troubleshoot, etc. cetera. Um, I will explain proxy objects. You don't have to use those at all today. I just want you to be aware of what they are and how you would make them if you want to make them. Um, but what you are going to need to post for 228 is whatever render you're working on. So day, night, interior, exterior, I don't care. It's something. When you come back after Thanksgiving break, we're going to spend the whole week, so two classes, dealing with sections and how to cut the section of your model. Uh, so I'm hoping that by the time you come back from break, your model's basically done. You shouldn't have to do any more modeling. You should have furniture in it. You should have everything that you want done, done. Um, and then we can concentrate on cutting some sections. So we'll have two classes on, so 229 and 230 will be on sections and how to cut sections through your model. Um, then on 231, we'll do some Photoshop post-processing. Um, not particularly complicated stuff, just a little bit um, so that you can make a few tweaks and make your images look a little bit better. Then we'll get ready to do some more rendering uh, on that last day. And then the following week, so two full weeks when we get back, then the following Monday, which is I think the 15th, everything's due and the semester's over. So there's not a lot of time left. Um, so today is a really good day to do some rendering um, and, and actually start bumping up the sizes and, and getting some ones that would be your final, final results. Um, I would always encourage you to make a rendering that you think you can use as your final and then if you have some corrections, want to change some things, you can always go back and re-render but at least you have something. Um, so sometimes people don't get to all the renderings but if you have a version of it, at least you have credit for that part of it even if it's not perfect. Okay, so today we're going to talk about V-Ray proxy objects and what they are. This is something that came into V-Ray um, in version 1.5 for Rhino, and it also has to have Rhino 5. So if you're at home, you have an older version of V-Ray or you have an older version of Rhino, it, this won't work. Um, so it's very specific. It is relatively new in uh, V-Ray for Rhino, so it's not something that has a lot of track record. I think there's still some quirks. Um, I really like the concept of it, but it doesn't always work the way you want it to. Um, the single biggest thing to understand about a proxy object is that what when you make an object, a V-Ray proxy object, it permanently alters and destroys the geometry that you created it from. So you cannot go back. It's an irreversible step. It's permanent end of uh, message, so to speak. So it, it's just really important to recognize that you're doing something permanent that you cannot undo when you do it. Uh, but at the same time, it can be very valuable. And the, the place where this is valuable is when you have something like a, uh, a background or a bunch of grass or something that's really slowing down your model and making it hard to work with, uh, or if your file gets gigantic in size, uh, this is where this comes into play. Uh, basically, what V-Ray does in, in creating a proxy object is it says, 
take the geometry that makes up this object, take the materials that make up this object, and create a file that represents those two uh, items, right? Save it, and then give you a preview of those two items that has much smaller, what's called polygon count, right? Has a couple faces that represent the object in Rhino temporarily, and when V-Ray does the render, it goes out and gets the, fi gets the file. So it's kind of like a block reference, except that it's um, designed just for V-Ray, right? And it goes out and gets the information. So I'm going to do an example, uh, and I'm going to use the bunch grass as the example. Uh, I have a bunch of bunch grass that's already been populated in my site. When all of that turns on, things get a little bit slower, right? It's not perfect, but it, it does happen. Uh, and what I'm going to do is instead of, of I've already populated this with bunch grass, but let's say I wanted to continue and have bunch grass elsewhere on my, on my site. Instead of continuing to copy these as individual block instances, I'm going to work with that um, to make it a V-Ray proxy object, right? And probably the easiest way to, to go through this, instead of working in my primary scene, I'm going to just go ahead and open it in a separate scene um, so that you guys can see it. So let me open another window of Rhino. Okay, so I have this here. Uh, one of the things that I do want to check before I do anything with this is I want to put a, an infinite plane in and double check. My, my V-Ray always hides my toolbars here. Um, give me just a second to reload them. Let me throw an infinite plane underneath, and let me make sure that the infinite plane, put it on a different layer, there, and I want to do a quick render to confirm that this is in fact looking the way it should, because like I said, as soon as I make this a proxy object, I can't edit it anymore. So I want to make sure that yes, this does look the way I want it to look, so we're going to do a quick render here and make sure. You want to make sure that the texture mapping set, all of that. Okay, so I've rendered it out. I'm happy with the look of it. It looks like the grass pile that I want. Uh, everything's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to create that proxy object. So uh, I'll go back to my original geometry. Remember, this is an irreversible process, so it's not a bad idea before we do that to do a save as, just in case we screw things up. Um, So, I'm going to select my objects, which are right here. Now, I don't need those curves at the bottom. I just need the surfaces. Uh, they already have their material applied. And I'm going to come right to this icon here. It's kind of like a tree. 
Uh, and if I left click, which is a normal click, it's going to import a V-Ray proxy. Instead, I want to right click because I'm going to make a V-Ray proxy. So I'll right click, uh, and it's going to say, where do you want to save the VR mesh file? Right? This is the V-Ray proxy object. So I'll go to my flash drive, I'll go to my 136 folder, and I think it's in this, right? I think it's here. Uh, and we'll call this bunch grass, if I can type, mesh, or VR mesh, probably VR mesh, better. And it's a .VR mesh file. And I'll go ahead and click save. And it's going to bring up this little dialog box. It's going to say, export all selected objects as a single mesh file, which is generally what you're going to want to pick. It's going to tell you the name and where you're saving it. Automatically create the proxy. Warn me if there's an existing file, because I don't want to overwrite it. right? And then you can also set a triangle count for preview. By default, it, it makes triangles that represent the object. You can specify how many triangles you want it to be. Obviously, the higher the number, the more it will approximate the shape. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as the default is just fine. And when I say OK, it's going to write the proxy object. Okay, and in this instance, it looks kind of close to um, the, the object that I had before, uh, but it's not. Let me go ahead and move this away here so you can see it. Um, it's kind of gray. It has no material applied to it. It's nothing particularly fancy about it. Right? If I... Let me back up a couple steps here, and I rewrote the proxy. Call this two, just as an example. And I set triangle count, and I'm going to set it deliberately really low so that you can hopefully see what happens. It looks almost nothing like the object anymore. Right? It looks like a few spikes. This will still render exactly the same as the original bunch graph. Right, so if I put in an infinite plane, sorry, I have to have a there, and I rendered it. So we can see right now it looks nothing like the actual object. But when I go to render, it will go get all of the information, including the materials, from that file, and it will render it. So in Rhino, we'll let this go in the background. This is a very lightweight object. Right? It doesn't take up a lot of memory in Rhino. It makes the computer really fast to work with. Uh, but it will ultimately render out in the full detail. So it's a way of working with complex files with a lot of geometry by simplifying some of the repetitive geometry. Um, the problem is that I can't go back and edit this again. I can't say. Uh, so for example, you remember when we were doing the skyscraper and we had the city of San Francisco? That was a pretty heavy file. It was a big thing. We could make a proxy object of the city of San Francisco, and it would always render out nicely but we could make the city basically go away while we were working on our particular building. The problem there is you don't understand site context anymore because it would be just some random polygon. Uh, but it does help a lot in the rendering process. So I want to bring this up as something that you can be aware of. Uh, the one other factor, anyway, we don't have to let this fully render. You can see that obviously it's going to render. The one other factor of a V-Ray proxy object is you can bring it in just like a block. Right? So once I've created this bunch grass proxy object, I can use this instead of the Rhino block. The only factor is that we have to bring in the material slightly differently. So if I click on the V-Ray material editor, you'll see that there's something called a multi-mat uh, that describes the material that's used for this. Uh, and it will, in my case, I only have one material, but if I had something that had four or five materials, let's say I had a chair and I made a proxy object out of a chair and it had leather and wood and whatever, it will create a multi-mat for the chair that has wood and leather and everything else that's used in it. They'll all be listed here. And I have to actually load that before I can have it render correctly. So best thing to do once you've created the VR mesh, find the VR mesh multi-mat, right click on it and say pack material. This will then pack the material that's required for this proxy object. I'll store it in the same folder that I store the proxy object in. Right, we'll call it multi-mat, and I'll go ahead and click Save. And so now, if I went back to my Rhino file here, and I wanted to continue this grass and put some more grass down below or put some grass on this side, right? I can bring in that proxy object. So I'll come to this Import Proxy Object. I'm going to left-click, or normal-click, and I'm, I will go to my flash drive, 
I'll go to 136, I'll go to 223, and there's my VR mesh. I'm going to use the first one. Uh, and I'll go ahead and say open, and it'll ask me where do I want to place it. I'll place it right there. So there's that VR mesh file. Right now, it doesn't have, there's, there it is, it doesn't have the materials, so I have to go to materials, and I'm going to have to load, oh, it looks like it did, it did load it, that's good, uh, but I may have to apply it to make sure it's actually working. So I'll right click and say uh, import material, and let me, I didn't extract it yet, so hold on a second. There's the multi-mat. All that time, extract. Okay, so all the parts of it are there. And let me come back. It probably is working because it's all contained on my same computer, but if it didn't, you'd have to make sure you loaded this material. So let me go to import material, go to my flash drive, and there's the multi-mat. I'm going to make sure we load that in. And there it is. Once I loaded it, it loaded in. It says grass now, so we know it's working. And I can then work with that piece of geometry here, just like I would with the regular blocks. Uh, and so I can move the object the same way. An ortho here. And I can copy. Uh, Move that one. So it works just like any normal object. Vertical. So what you do about the, older the ones that are here? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because I already created them, uh, it's not worth going back and redoing it. Uh, the idea is that you would create the proxy object first and then use it. Uh, the bunch grass is a particularly good place to use a proxy object. Um, I don't overly emphasize it because there's a lot of steps to make sure it's working correctly, and sometimes it's not necessary. Uh, in this scene context, my, my computer's still running relatively reasonably, even though I have 100 uh, blocks here. Um, but there are times where it just gets too overwhelming. Sometimes, let's say you're doing skyscraper and you have a lot of furniture that's going on every floor of the skyscraper. If you put it all in as a regular object, it'll just kill um, the rhino file. If you do proxy objects and populate proxy objects, it doesn't, doesn't really hurt the rhino file. Or if you're doing a really large building and you have a bunch of windows and you bring them in each as a block and they're just repetitive, if you change it to a proxy object, you'll get uh, a lot more better performance out of rhino out of it. So it's just kind of a trade-off, but it's something that I think as you get more and more advanced in rhino uh, and or V-Ray, it's important to kind of recognize how it works so that you can use it if you want to. Right? And that's the purpose of me spending the time talking through it. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys go and, and really try to do some good renderings today. And you, like I said, you don't have to create a proxy object. I just wanted to spend the time to at least explain what it is and that it's available. Um, I think it's going to get better in future releases of V-Ray and or Rhino. Uh, I think you'll probably end up with the ability to go back and edit the object. I, mean, I think there's a lot of things that just haven't happened yet. Uh, like I said, it's relatively new. Uh, it's only been around for six months or so. Um, but it's it's good at what it does. Okay, are there any other questions? What's the advantage of changing that triangle uh, option? Lower and lower, the lower the triangle, the less, so let's say um, I was using bunch grass and I used 5,000 pieces of bunch grass. Okay, if I set the triangle count at 100 and I had 5,000, right, I'd have whatever, 50,000 polygons representing those 5,000 pieces of grass. If I set the um, count to 10 instead, I'd have you know well, almost 1% of that, if that makes sense, or 10% of that in terms of the number of polygons. So it lowers the amount of geometry that Rhino has to process. So the lower that number, the less you can see the object, the less it represents the object accurately, but the easier it is for Rhino to, to run. Oh, well, it'll deteriorate the it won't deteriorate the rendering, it, but it will deteriorate the previewed object that you're working with. So, so when, you're working when I was doing this, yeah. I, the, the, the first object, the first VR mesh that I had, and let me just go ahead and load it so you can see it in, in comparison. It's just harder right. to work with. Right. Sorry, I did the wrong. 
So there's, there's one object that has a higher polygon count. There's one that has a lower polygon count. This one is much less overhead on Rhino to process because it has just a few triangles. This one is more, but I can't see much of this one. So when I'm working with the object in the scene, uh, let's say I brought this one in instead of this one, there's not very much, there's not too much for me to have. You can't see what it's doing. Exactly. But it's the same rendering as far as But the, the rendering the results will be identical. So as far as placing one next to the other, you might have gaps that won't be there? It's harder to see. It's harder to preview. You know, this one is a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good representation of what I have. This one, on the other hand, isn't too much. This is much less overhead. So if I had ten thousand of them, this would be a lot better than this one. But, you know, this one I can see a little more. So there's trade-offs, and that's why it allows you to manually set the polygon count because you can try to determine what's the right balance of low geometry enough so that I can see what's going on. So anyway, that's how a proxy object works. <coughs> um, spend your time today trying to get your renderings done. <coughs> um, at least get one good rendering done because then you're well on your way for the final. Okay. Uh, recognize that you do have uh, next Wednesday the light fixture is due. Um, interior or a um, night view and a day view of both light fixtures. So I think it's four total um, images. Am I correct? Four. It's four total images. I think. So recognize that that's coming too. So if you want to work on that today, you can work on that. Um, the point being, spend your time wisely.